is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news will fix or repair your car on the on air. air. Control. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin. Control. Because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. That's right, it's begun. Cruise Control is on the air and ready to go. Hello, everyone. I'm Fred Staub, and along for the ride around the automotive industry with me is none other than Les Jackson. Hey, Les. Hey, man. Uh, big, big times in the auto industry. Oh, uh, yeah. Even though August used to be the plant shutdown time. Yeah, remember that? <laughs> they can, yeah. The only reason they shut down plants now is when they run out of parts, right? Don't have any parts. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not the same tradition. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we're going to lead off this hour with a story that I'm sure will make less sad. Not that we want to do that, but uh, the Maxima mm. is going out of production. The Nissan Maxima, yes, they still make that. A lot of people are like, do they still make that? Well, yes, they do. Is there a large sedan? And we're going to say goodbye to it, aren't we, Les? Well, that's too bad. I really like the Maxima. Uh, and in ordinary times, um, when they go out of business or stop producing, this would be a great time to buy one because you could get a great deal on one. Yeah, yeah. Well, not now. I don't think anyone no. gets great deals anymore. No deals. <laughs> your your deal is at least you got you got a you vehicle. Got a car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and we and we extracted money from you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Anyway, Genesis. Speaking of money, prices out its new super luxurious G90. We'll mm -hmm. talk about that. Yeah. And, and over at GM, uh, Bolt owners are well being paid off. We'll tell you tell you what that is about it's, uh that's uh, kind of a fire bizarre sale, right <laughs> don't say that word yeah <laughs> you're right yes uh and uh, will the new mustang gt be packing even more ponies like maybe 500 yeah interesting story because we had heard they had to change the tune of the Coyote V8, and they lost some horsepower. Now that yep. horsepower might be found again, something in the tune. So we will, uh, we will, you know, kind of talk a little bit about just, that, right? Yeah, that's right. It's just amazing what they can get out of these engines. It's yeah, it, it sure is, and uh, not worth it. G uh, Jeep is leaving the uh, production of vehicles in China. We'll tell you why. You know, the whole China market has changed, hasn't it? It's not really the big market it was once was. No, it's it's maturing in a in a, I think an unpredictable way. Mm -hmm. uh, and remember, uh, several car companies built big factories over there. GM with uh, with the Buicks. Yeah, uh, I I think. You're going to see all of these kind of abandoning the factories, and they'll just become Chinese manufacturers. Yep, and then we're going to have an at-the-wheel review of the brand-new Toyota Corolla Cross Great Compact CUV from the folks at Toyota. All coming up on Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will be right back.
Cruise Control. Welcome back to Cruise Control. As we uh, stated in the opening, uh, the Nissan Maxima, which is a terrific car that is in the, one of those kind of forgotten models. Uh, pe people just don't think about them much. Uh, it's going away. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly because I guess people don't buy them much. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that's true. I mean, and but, mainly because cars. what is it? It's a big sedan, right? It's a sedan. Um, for some reason, the sedans have become the new station wagons which, <laughs> in the sense that, oh, no, we don't want station wagons. Um, they're great. They're yeah, they're comfortable. Great value. They're comfortable. They're super reliable. Yeah, but they're just not selling well. Sales total nope. of 3,753 through the first half of 2022 represents That's a decline of over 62% <laughs> compared in to 20. In one year. Yeah. In one year. Uh, the glory year. This used to be the vehicle to get. I remember this. Uh, glory years in the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, there's just not a market for a V6-powered front-wheel drive CVT-equipped sedan. Uh, they want hmm. good, nice-looking seats in there, by the way. I, and they look comfortable. <laughs> They're, yeah, I, I wish I had one. Yeah. Uh, but what will happen? Well, look at what Toyota did with their Avalon. We talked about it the other week on Cruise Control. Mm -hmm. This is the Toyota Crown. And uh, I think it will come back. The Maxima will come back like that, a raised yeah. sedan. Basically, the idea is you'll have all-wheel drive and a sedan and the higher seating position because, let's face it, if you don't have a higher seating position today, you, f you, can't, you can't see around stuff, right? That's right. And uh, let's, I know when I go to back out, if I'm in a car, and I go to back out of a uh, parking space. It's just like, you know, you're in a garage and pulling out, right? <laughs> exactly. It's, uh, it, it is something that requires a, a lot of attention and very slow moving. Right. Because whoever's crossing your path isn't going to care that you're moving. No. They're just going to keep coming. Mm-hmm. Well. Um, still. That's one sedan going away. But there is a rumor, a lot of talk, and, uh, you know, GM President Mark Royce has said that there will be a fully electric Chevrolet Corvette. He told that to CNBC back in April. Yep. Uh, but it now looks, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of rumors out there that there will be a four-door electric Corvette sedan. We predicted this. Yes, built, we didn't predict four doors. Built on the Celestique chassis. Yep. And I also think that they will build an SUV version of it as well. Yep. And Corvette will become the performance brand. I think as Camaro fades away, I think everything mm -hmm. performance as Chevrolet will be have a Corvette name on it. What do you think? And you might even end up with a mini Corvette, you know, sort of a BRZ. BRZ version, yeah, uh, for what forty five thousand or so. Well, let me ask you this: that would that mean the return of the rear wheel drive, possibly electric Corvette, as an sure. a, as a something in the lineup? Sure. Uh, um, yeah. So you know they've talked about leveraging this brand for a while, and. Is it a good thing or is it a bad thing? What do you think? Uh, I mean, I it, think it's a good thing. Okay. Uh, you know, I think Porsche did it. Porsche managed to. Sure. Remember that was heresy when we talked about that. Oh my God! You're gonna, you're gonna have a four door Porsche and then you're gonna have a SUV yep. Porsche, and then, and then look, Lamborghini did one. it. Yeah. Everybody wants one. Yeah. So I think this is something we will see. I I also think. With electric cars and shared platform, I think you'll see a lot more variation of models. You know, it will be yep. a lot easier to bring out a sedan, a, a crossover, or whatever. Um, 
I don't think it will dilute the brand. I think I, but I think it will become a sub brand of GM. Uh, I, you know, I think you're right. It'll be a, well, it, it is a sub brand, uh, but I think uh, of divorced from the other brands, you know, it'll be Corvette. Yeah. Not, In not a GM division. Just interesting. Just, just like, Sort of like Hummer is within uh, right. GMC. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, there you have it. C9. This would be during the C9 generation. Uh, so we'll we'll have to see. You'll just have to stay tuned to Cruise Control to learn about it. Hey, I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will be right back on Cruise Control. Stay tuned. Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. Well, you know, um, we can't avoid the subject of fires, can we, Fred? <laughs> well, no. Um, uh, we try. Yeah. That it. Uh, I mean, hey, you know, technology is technology. Sometimes there are problems with electric cars. I believe I read an article about an I-Pace, uh, which is yep. a Jaguar going up in flames. There was a corvette test vehicle that went up in flames and at mm -hmm. the nurberg ring and boy when they burn they burn to nothing. a bunch of bunch of teslas have gone up in flames um but but there's one vehicle that has had a big problem with it isn't it yeah and and again it's not chevrolet's fault um it's the it, battery it's supplier. the battery supplier but it doesn't matter it's your name on it 
Yeah. And uh, now the bolt is in trouble. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, what they did last w uh, last month is GM said uh, if you purchased a, a bolt EV just prior, uh, they offer rebates to people that purchased uh, bolt EVs prior to the price being slashed. Uh, and also, uh, they are telling people they will give them money if they don't sue over the... Well, yeah, uh, that's for people <laughs> That's for people whose house didn't burn down with it. Right, because you could easily <laughs> create $6,000 worth of damage with a fire yeah. in your garage. But, you know, if it, if it burned up out in the parking lot... Yeah. And they're going to, you know, make you whole... Um, all right. Well, okay. Yeah. It's sad because the Bolt is a great little car. I liked yeah. it. I thought this is a Same great here. way for people who say, hey, I want an electric car, but I don't want to spend 50 grand to get into it. And they even have, yep. um, I never drove it, but they have the, the sort of little SUV version of it. They basically squared the back end off and right. gave it a little more storage. <clears throat> 100, yeah, 150 miles or so range. I, uh. And well, that was the first one actually. Less, I think, with the extended battery that had over had two hundred and thirty. Yeah, or two, that's yeah. right. So uh, it would make a great little around town car, but you know, I think the brand that name plate may have, you know, been ruined by this, right? Yeah, um, yeah. And GM is smart; they're just going to cut their losses and uh, and and keep moving. Do you think they'll revive that name in the future or no? I personally, I think it's a lousy name. Yeah. Cause and I never liked it. Because Volt was the better name, but that name was already taken by the extended electric uh, vehicle. But, you know, Bolt. Remember Bolt and Volt? We said you're going to confuse those two. Very confusing. And it's not a good name. Yeah. Bolt. It, what's that mean? Yeah. Okay. So... The, you know, why not call it the Edison? <laughs> Probably there's a rights problem. You always <laughs> you always asked a great question, and I would love to research that. Of course, Tesla was not started by Elon Musk. It was started by someone else. Right. But would how could they use that family name? Does the family own the rights to that? There's obviously rel uh, relatives of well, Tesla, right? The original Tesla. Yeah, you would probably Nikolai have Tesla. to pay the family some or you, royalty. Or would you do it out of goodwill? Like I know, I know like in the whole world of drag racing, there are people that recreate cars from the 60s and they actually go to the family and say, can I do this, recreate this car that your, you know, departed husband mm -hmm. drove, put his name on it as a tribute. I don't know if their money changes hands. I don't think so, but I think from a sense of ethics, I would say, like, here's what I plan on doing. Here's, like, a rendering of it. I want to make it look original. This is what I'm going to do with it. Would you be okay with it? That would be a nice thing to do, wouldn't it? It would, actually. Many, <coughs> a few years ago, made a tribute uh, car model to James Hunt. Mm -hmm. And his son, who looked just like his father uh, said the family said just go ahead do it yeah yeah well and you look at i guess it's a little bit different in when the case of the bullet mustang but steve yeah. mcqueen's uh, uh son was involved with that uh just it's just good policy i think to involve them but uh, sure yeah hey let's uh let's talk a little bit about the id4 of course we told you about the volkswagen id4 they're going to start building them in uh the u.s and now we have some pricing on the 2003 ID4. It has a starting MSRP of 37,495, which is downright uh, cheap <laughs> for an electric vehicle of that size. Actually, it? it is. It's a new 62 kilowatt hour battery that brings in a lower cost of entry, and you can still get a federal tax credit off of that price. So now it's very affordable <laughs> as far as cars go um, today. 
so the standard, let me see what the standard range is if we have that. Uh, I don't know if I have this standard. Well, uh, there's there's an estimated range of 255, but I don't know if that's, no, 208. 208 is 62 the, kilowatt. Okay. Well, that's that, pretty good. That's pretty good. I mean, think of this as a family hauler and doing the errand runs and, and going around town. Not bad. Not bad. Um, and once again, if you can get $7,500 off of that, you're below $30,000. Yeah. And uh, inter yeah. interesting, interesting, and uh, good to see that is built in the U.S. Then if you want to step up, if you want to step up from there, uh, you have the ID4 Pro S and ID4 All-Wheel Drive S. And uh, the Pro S has an MSRP of 47495 The All-Wheel Drive Pro S has a, a price of 51295 get things like a heated steering wheel, rear passenger seat pass-through, which is weird that that's an upgrade, <laughs> isn't it? Um, it is. Yeah, center armrest with cup holders, fixed glass roof, aluminum alloy wheels. Then if you want even more, because who doesn't want more, uh, uh, Pro S Plus and ID4 All-Wheel Drive Pro S Plus, kind of confusing names, uh, MSRP of... 50195 and at the top of the range one, the all-wheel drive Pro S Plus, 53995 You can get that $7,500 off of all of them. Still not. It's getting a little pricey. It's not bad, though, as electric vehicles go. It's a lot of vehicle. True, true. Um, and the range, uh, 295 horsepower. Uh, I think the extended range is 275. 275. Which is, uh, long, you know, that's that's a that's a fairly serious trip in a day. One one vehicle I was driving. I think it's the one I'm going to review. Um, I filled it up, and it it had a range of 310 miles, and I thought, well, that's not that different than some of these electric cars, right? This was That's a gas-powered vehicle. Uh, I think I think it was the Corolla Cross. It had uh, a range of 310 miles, and I thought, okay. So uh, there are a lot of electric cars now that have a 300-mile range. So, But uh, all of them are going to be built in the U.S. I'm going to be driving one pretty soon. Have you ever driven the ID4? I drove one for a very short distance. Uh, um, no, I haven't. I I will uh, see if one's available. Yeah. So we're going to have a review of that coming up or uh, uh, a loan of that. Now, let's talk about something completely different. If you want a Mercedes S-Class, but you're just not into paying big money. I mean, maybe you are. <laughs> maybe some people are. Not I me. Don't know. No, no. <laughs> uh, but uh, you can get this uh, Genesis G90. I'm in the GV70 right now, which is a beautiful vehicle. But you can get this G90, and we're going to tell you about the pricing on this. It's well below the S-Class, but I tell you what, it has a lot of similarities to the S-Class. We'll talk about it when we come back on Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will be right back.
Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Fred Staub and Les Jackson, we are taking you on a ride around the automotive industry. We are your on-air automotive magazine, and we're here, and we really enjoy you following us along with us. Uh, we try to tell you about some new models coming out, maybe give you some tips if you're going out to buy a new vehicle, and just tell you about interesting stuff that has wheels on it right Les yeah. Jackson um, it keeps us busy just yes it, it sure staying does. up with it sure does and you and I are big fans of Genesis matter of fact I'm driving the GV70 right now and we'll have an at the wheel review of that coming up uh, in the upcoming weeks but the G90 is the top of the range large sedan and this I drove mm -hmm. one of these about a year ago uh, what a, a vehicle, incredible long trip vehicle. You are in the lap of luxury. It rides so smoothly. It's just out of this world. And we have pricing on the 2023 Genesis G90. You know how you buy something, he says, compare with, right? That's right. Compare with. Uh, well, they would like you to compare this with the Mercedes S-Class. Certainly. Certainly. Uh, 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 every bit. Two configurations. The first one starts at $88,400, which is a lot less than an S-Class. Um, and that uh, is the 3.5-liter turbo all-wheel drive, 375 horsepower, 391 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed automatic, uh, it's got drive mode select, variable gear ratio steering, forward collision assist. A lot of these things you would see in other vehicles. 20-inch alloy wheels, mm -hmm. uh, power door closure. And mood curator. <laughs> so what does that do? I happen to know. I'm glad you asked. Yes. Um, what it does is it, it monitors what the vehicle is doing at all times and uh, make and adjust your posture. Oh, wow. Uh, so that you're optimally tuned to the car, which then keeps you in the proper mood for, you know, being alert and yet relaxed. Okay. So move your seat around without expecting it. Well, that might be kind of weird. Probably <laughs> they're, very, they're very subtle changes. I'm sure. Yeah. It's not like the, you move your seat starts moving forward <laughs> while you're driving and it oh, starts moving or forward up. <laughs> or up. it's like now i can't see anything you know, out the out the uh... here's an important feature uh power rear and rear side sunshades that's that's pretty cool love those things acoustic laminated windshield yep uh, um head up display active noise control for the road Fingerprint authentication system. That's pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah. So that is the base model at eighty-eight thousand uh, four hundred, all-wheel drive vehicle. Only a thousand dollar, thousand ninety-five freight, and that's a big, big vehicle, right? To be hauling around. Uh, but uh, then, if you want more or less, Jackson. You can get the G90 3.5 liter all wheel drive with 48 volt E supercharger. That pumps that V6 up to 409 horsepower, 405 feet yep. of torque. Replaces the V8 that used to be in that. The last one I had had a V8. So they're done away with the V8. Rear steering. This is something that if you get the S Class, you will have to pay for it as a subscription, I believe. At least that's well, what that's intended. just silly. Well, for ninety eight thousand seven hundred dollars, they put it in there. Yeah, we're going to compare this. You, you'll have this before I get the S class, which is at the end of January. But we'll compare. You know, value to value. Well, here's some of the things you get in this in this up upscale model: twenty one inch alloy wheels. Ventilated rear seats, power rear seats with massage function, easy closed doors, mm -hmm. wireless charger in the rear. You don't find that much. That's good. 
tire mobility kit deletes temporary spare. I always look at my review vehicles, whether they have a temporary spare or a mobility kit, and I encourage which, which other people to do. Which is a can of uh, spray. Mobility <laughs> kit is a can of fix a flat. Yeah, uh, um, I always, but I always think it's better to look, you know, ahead of I time. I agree, and you, I I just feel more secure with a spare. Yeah, I could help myself. What if they said roadside assistance said, oh, I can't be there for five hours. You know, well, yeah. at least I could jam that temporary spare on and get rolling again. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I I just prefer it. Uh, what's interesting, too, and this is going to look incredible. There uh, there is a uh, surcharge for metallic and pearl exterior paint selections. I'm sure they have some nice colors. Yep. Probably well, that's typical, though, in a lot of manufacturers. That is. Good-looking vehicle, though. I think it's, it's you know, when you look at this, 98,700, you said uh, you're going to be testing an S-Class coming up uh, in right. a month or so. And those things are what one thirty to one fifty. Well, it's one hundred and twenty-one plus whatever options it's got. Yeah. So, it, that will be pretty yeah. significant. So the difference there is a Nissan Maxima. Do they have? <laughs> does it have the mood? What is it? The mood altering? <laughs> device? I don't think so. <laughs> mood, mood culture. Yeah. No. Mood. Yeah. Mood. Mood. Whatever. Yeah. So there you have it. That's the GV90. But let's talk about something that's a little bit more affordable. We told you the Detroit Auto Show is the time that um, the, the new Mustang is going to come out. We know it's going to have a manual because uh, Jim Farley, the head of Ford, uh, had hashtag save the manuals. Uh, we know uh, that there will be a V8. We know that there will be a four-cylinder turbo. Probably a V6, too. But uh, what will it be packing for power? Well, there's a rumor out there that it will be 500 horsepower. But we don't know whether that is the regular GT or one of the new variants. If you know, if you remember, the Coyote engine lost some power because they had to retune for emissions. That power is coming back, apparently. Um, and... Uh, well, we don't know. The current model has GT has 450. The Mach 1 is 470. Could they bump the horsepower up to even more or less, Jackson? I think there's sure. horsepower left on the table if they can get it to pass uh, emissions, right? Yeah. Um, they always have some space. Yeah. Uh, you know, I tell you, they put a smile on your face, the, the GTs. I. Yeah, the the GT five hundreds are incredible. It's a great car. It would be wonderful to have one, but even the GT sounds good. Yep. And uh, it's just a fun car to drive, wouldn't you say? Yep, and fairly economical. Fairly e economical if you keep your foot out of it, and you can get all kinds of Ford performance parts for it, like supercharging and all that, and uh, you can make a super sleeper out of it if you supercharge one of those Coyotes, yeah. can't you? For sure. For sure. Yeah. So we'll we'll keep you up to date on that and let you know what's happening with that. Uh, also, looks like Jeep, you know, you, you and I talked about this, that Jeep and many manufacturers wanted to build vehicles in China. Well, there's an article uh, with a great title on it from Car Buzz. Jeep is leaving China before it's too late. They're going to shut their only factory there because of increasing political concerns, according to CEO Carlos Chaveras. And they will be terminating their 12-year-long partnership with GAC, a state-owned company that produces Jeeps for the Chinese market. Uh, there's just too much political interference in the world of business in China. And he referred to other motor brands that in recent weeks have suffered because of sanctions in countries as Russia. We don't want to be the victim of cross sanctions, as been the case for other companies. Apparently, when you build a vehicle over there, you have to go before a government board and they want all the plans and all the engineering data. Yep. And guess what happens to that data? 
they have every intention of, of stealing nationalizing it. your company. Yeah. So it's what they do. They've done it forever. So, you know, it makes sense. They'll still sell them there. They'll just build them elsewhere. I think that's a better play, don't you? Absolutely, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, what? some of the uh, vehicles they bring out, they have an F-150 clone. They have all kinds of clones. They have Jeep clones. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it just looks like they just copied it. They're skilled at copying stuff. That's they, Again, they've done it for decades and decades. Yep. Hey, when we come back, we're going to talk about Toyota leveraging one of its most popular vehicles to build yet another compact crossover. It's the Toyota Cross. So Toyota Corolla Cross, I should say. We'll have that when we come back. Stay tuned.
And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. It's time for an at-the-wheel review. We love to review the latest vehicles we can get our hands on and tell you about what we think of them. This time around, it is Toyota, the Toyota Corolla Cross, based off the Toyota Corolla, and it is a crossover. I love this vehicle because, as you know, I own a Pontiac Vibe, which was based on a Toyota Corolla. The Toyota Matrix was their, their version of it. And I think this is sort of the ancestor of it, frankly. This is sort of, you know, leveraging that Toyota Corolla platform and, and taking it to the next level. Overall, clean design on the outside. Uh, some nice styling lines on the sides of the vehicle. Just a clean look. Nothing too aggressive. Uh, side view mirrors seem a little bit big for the vehicle, but they do offer good good visibility. A little bit of cladding around the wheel wells, which says, hey, I'm a crossover. And certainly cues that will let you know that this is a Toyota Corolla and it is in the Toyota family. I love the fact that the back bumper has black on it with the bump and rub parking people often do. That means your paint won't get scratched up. Same on the front, and it has got the traditional big grill that we find on many Toyotas nowadays. On the inside, while well, ours was a black Softex exterior, uh, interior, I should say, XLE, we had the top of the range model, uh, comfortable seats, leather-like seats. Everything was black on the inside. I kind of would have liked to have seen the two-tone macadamia interior that I have seen before on other Toyota Corollas, and that is available. Rear seat room, not a lot of it, and uh, a little bit tight because the rear seat cushion is kind of big. But overall, if you've been in a Toyota Corolla, you will recognize this dash and the interior controls. Well-equipped Android Auto, uh, Apple CarPlay. Out back, the storage is great. You get a, uh, a roll-style cover to hide whatever you got back there. Ours had the JBL system, so you got a, a subwoofer. And nice surprise, when you look under the mat, there is a temporary spare and jack. So always good idea to look at what's on there. Uh, under the hood, a 2-liter 4-cylinder dynamic force engine, only about 169 horsepower. I wish it was a little bit more dynamic, frankly, uh, because it was a little slow at times. CVT transmission. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up in the, in the lineup soon, which could help with the horsepower. Out back, the rear seats don't fold completely flat. There is sort of a little transition piece, um, but it's not, it's not as bad as some other SUVs that are on an angle, the storage area, when the rear seats are folded down. Good room, though, on the interior. Uh, I like the fact that they had a chrome bezel that kind of divides the roof and the uh, side of the vehicle, you can get two-tone paint, uh, which looks really nice. I saw one with a uh, black color roof and a green, uh, which was really, really nice. This color is called Celestite Gray, and we had the black interior. Uh, I think this is going to be a big hit for the folks over at Toyota. Uh, as I said, they're, they're working off of technology that is proven they're working off of a platform that is proven and a name that is proven and uh i got i have to tell you this thing is rated at i believe 32 miles to the gallon on the highway i got 37 without even trying 37 miles to the gallon that is with all-wheel drive as well the model we tested had all-wheel drive and um, you can get it with front-wheel drive as well. As I mentioned, ours was the XLE, the top-of-the-range model. And it started, it's very affordable actually, starting at 27625 as far as things go today. Uh, ours was well-equipped with the Audio Plus 8-inch touchscreen, JBL speaker system, Android Auto, and Apple CarPlay. For some reason, I thought the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay was supposed to be wireless. It was not. I had to use a wire. Once I figured that out, it was fine. Um, it comes with a Sirius XM uh, satellite radio 3M platinum subscription uh, and includes a security alarm. You don't have navigation, a navigation system per se. When you hit the nav button, it would say, 
you know, you can contact uh, Toyota to get that app, which I guess is something you pay for on a yearly basis or not. But I used uh, both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, tri tried them both. They both work great. So really, you don't really need that. Uh, tilt and slide moonroof and power back door, uh, $1,250. Auto leveling adaptive uh, lighting system for the headlights, 615 When you go for that, that's that's where you get the great safety rating with the with the headlight system. Uh, carpeted floor mats and cargo mats, 249 Door sill protectors. A lot of this is, I believe, dealer installed stuff. Crossbars, 179. Rear bumper protector, 79. Activity mount. Activity mount is uh, basically would be a trailer hitch, but it's really designed for bicycle holders or some kind of holder for your activity stuff. <laughs> if you're an active lifestyle person. All that said, including the $1,215 handling processing handling fee which seems a bit high because this vehicle is built in alabama and is not a huge vehicle but total there thirty three thousand five fifty thirty three thousand five fifty for a well-equipped toyota cross xle all-wheel drive model now i mentioned this has 169 horsepower the dynamic force two liter four-cylinder engine uh throwing it down with a dual variable valve timing CVT transmission. Not the fastest vehicle out there. I found I had to do some waiting uh, when accelerating. It's not terrible, but it is not the fastest vehicle out there. But help is on the way. Toyota has announced that they will have a three-motor hybrid system. We don't have pricing on it. We don't know when it will be out. But that will have close to 200 horsepower, 197 horsepower to be exact. And if the calculations are correct, that should be have mileage in the low 40s, which is pretty amazing for an all-wheel drive vehicle. It is made uh, at the new Mazda Toyota manufacturing plant in Huntsville, Alabama, with a lot of the parts coming from that area as well. And uh, that's pretty exciting. That's good to see. Um, you... Uh, We'll be able to get this uh, with a lot of different options, a, a lot of different uh, grades and three grades, L, L, E, and X, L, E. I would say I would opt for the lighter color interior. I found the interior on this one, which was all black, to be, uh, well, just a little dark. I mean, it, it made it feel a little plain, and that's typically not the feeling I would get from Toyota Corollas uh, when it had the two-tone interior. That that seem to make it seem a little bit more upscale so uh, just a thought there typically i like black interiors in this case i might go with the lighter color because it gives you a two-tone dash and is really nice i also found too they had some usb connections for the rear seat passengers but they were way down at the floor difficult to get to i'd like to see toyota move that up a little bit um, overall though a really nice tight design on the outside good room on the inside and great economy it definitely reminds me of the vibe and matrix because it it has that utilitarianism the small packaging on the outside built on a a rock solid platform um, under the hood uh, they no longer put engine covers on these things i guess they try to save a little money uh, so the engine is not the most attractive one you would ever see but it does a good job of moving it around and the hybrid version will do an even better job of moving it around i think that's going to be a big hit for the folks at uh, toyota i don't see any reason why this will not be one of their top sellers will we see down the line uh a a little bit more uh how shall we say rugged edition of this with a little bit of a, a raised up body and that i i think so to compete with things like the outback wilderness and and some of the other toughened up uh little crossovers but right now, it is a clean-looking, great package. Uh, you couldn't go wrong buying one of these. It would serve you for a long, long time. That is the at-the-wheel review of the Toyota Corolla Cross XLE. Hey, we appreciate you listening to Cruise Control Radio. Don't forget to check us out at cruisecontrolradio.com, where you can like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Time for me to say I'm Fred Staub. He is Les Jackson. We will see you down the road. <laughs>